What's up, guys? I'm Brad U. I'm gonna do. Uh, I got a real fun video for you today. Uh, I just got a awesome mail day from what is it? Baseball card exchange. I've never got from them before. I have some '83 Don Russ here. I'm gonna be busting four packs. I feel really good about the, uh, the idea. Of buying vintage card, vintage packs can be sketchy as far as pack searches and all that. I feel pretty good about the fact that this is in a little sealed baggie for a dollar twenty-nine. Anyway, I'm gonna do four packs for right now. I'm gonna open this up. Um, and I'll keep the rest for later. But I'm going to open four packs, and then uh, we're going to do four different colors. And then what I'm going to do is use them. Let's do reds against the oranges. Uh, I'm going to use the cards I get out of these packs to introduce to you guys. Uh, a baseball game I made up using dice and a set of rules that I made up. So anyway, I'll do the pa I'll do the cards first, and then uh, and I'm hoping to shoot this as one <laughs> continuous video that could you know could drag on a little bit as I do the game. If you, of course, if you don't care about the game, you can just watch the pack break. And. Uh, very good chance I'll have to split it up because I've got two sleeping boys and they could wake up at any time. Um, Alright, let's get to it. 83 Donruss. So what I'm looking here for here is Sternberg, Boggs, Gwyn, I believe are the top ones. Um, and here's how it goes. As far as the game goes, two packs should get me a baseball team. That later. All right, here we go. I've never opened this product aside from maybe when I was. You know, <laughs> I don't. I'm, I suspect I opened a few packs of these. Ronnie Smith. Diamond Kings. Gotta love Diamond Kings. Not Sandberg we're looking for though, but, but Sandberg. And there he is. Ha <laughs> ha, nice. It looks like the cards right behind him are damaged, but he didn't get the damage. Centering could be better, but hey, that's a nice hit for my first pack. Uh, see if I'm going to be using these in a game. Put it in a soft sleeve for now. I'll be handling him. Nice, nice start. Jeez, man. I think Gwyn is the top one. Top of the works pretty sweet too. And I think that that's a card that I need for my personal collection. I collect, I'm not a big baseball card collector. I was as a kid. I just started watching baseball again the last couple of years. And I started doing this collection. I decided what I want is rookies <laughs> like this. I mean, these are cards I only dreamed of having as a kid. Now, now the values are still low enough that uh, you can put together a pretty darn good collection of all the dream rookies for cheap. Rod Carew. Love that guy. I should read each name, but I'm not going to. Cesar Cedeno, didn't I get him last pack? Good. That, that actually makes me feel good. It doesn't look like there's a sequence, because I think I did get him. And I did not get any of the other thing cards, I think. Sure enough. Okay. So anyway, there's one team. Put those aside, and I'll look at those in a minute. All right, off to a good start, though. First pack hit. Uh, awesome. So anyway, I'm trying to put together a collection, a personal collection, of just getting each of the good rookies for, through the 80s. And so I just picked up a 
lot of I've never bought I've never opened vintage wax other than seven as an adult. Um, so I bought at least a couple packs from every year and I didn't do it at nine or ten or seven. So I own at least and team number two. Nikki Hatcher. Steve Carlton. Gonna be a decent starting pitcher probably. Last pack for now. I got a bunch more in there. Isn't that cool? I'm surprised these are pretty reasonably priced. Now, however, if you're looking at like the value or eBay, what you buy the cards for, I'm like, well, you know, the biggest value card in the, in the back it is what twenty bucks or something. <laughs> so. All right, so we're looking for Tony Gwynn here. Steve Garvey. I like Garvey. And there's Rod Carew again. Uh-oh. Now we got trouble. Which team gets Rod Carew? <laughs> Cover that. I'm going to go with whichever team has fewer... First baseman. Since this team got Pete Rose, Rod's probably going on the other team. We'll see. Anyway, so there's my teams. There's my pack opening. Um, here's the idea of the game. It's called, I call it Pack Wars Baseball. Uh, I've done this my entire life of opening cards. Oh, crap. Pause. Phone call. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I wish I would have ignored that call, but that's okay. All right, here we are. We're going to play Pack Wars Baseball with the two, with the four packs of 83 Donruss I just opened. So, when I was a kid, I'd get some packs of cards, and I'd always do this. I'd get them and, like, sort them out into a team, right? And look at what my lineup's going to be. And then I would go... I want to play a game with them, like which is the best team or whatever. And so that's what I did here. I made up a game statistically based using only the stats on the back of the card. That's a good sign. I got two catches in a pack, so or in two packs. I, well, I should be able to put together a roster with this team. That's what they say anyways. Three. I can trade if I need to between the teams. But anyway, I made up a, a game using the stats on the cards and dice, and and you can open up a few packs of cards and play a game, whether for with a friend or solo. You don't have to open new packs, but that was my vision of this game: is you get a few packs, you actually get fun enjoyment out of the you know, using the cards for something. And that's just how I always dreamed of collecting and how I always did it. And I'd make up games when I was a kid, not really, you know, I, I guess what I'm saying, being a kid, not really smart enough to understand how to make a good game, if that makes any sense. And now as an adult, I feel really confident that the game I've made, at the very least, is going to be pretty statistical. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go through real quick. I'm going to do the whole thing on video. I could probably, like, make my roster and then come back, and the video would be shorter. I don't really care. You guys are going to get to hear me ramble or whatever. So I'm looking at catchers. I'm, I'm going to make a – just for this, I'm going to do, like, probably an inning. I'll make my two teams, um, nine position players and one pitcher. But if I was doing this for kicks, I'd probably make a whole pitching rotation and look at who my – um, pinch hitters would be and things like that. So what I really want to focus on here is batting average. There's no defensive statistics on a baseball card generally. Okay, we got a clear winner. Bo Diaz, 288 average, 18 homers. He's going to be our catcher. I just go up to the side. I just put all of the infielders in one pile. So look at our first baseman. Pretty sure it's going to be Rod Carew. Rod Carew, 319. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at this. We got 331 
Al Oliver. I'm going to just put Al Oliver in as my first baseman. Rod might be coming in on the other team if he doesn't even crack the starting lineup here. So second base. I have one second baseman card. 280, so we're going to use that off. It's good. Several short stops to choose from. Good 41. This guy's the only guy who's full time. So I'll go with him. I might, I might need to pick and pick somebody else if I was. And Ryan Sandberg with a good rookie year, 271. Third base on his rookie card. Three twelve, he's in almost for sure. But he's three oh seven. Holy cow, I got good news. Three ten, what is going on? I've got phenomenal outfielders on this team. Hmm. Three oh seven, three ten, three twelve. So they're all in for sure. So now my D eight is be either Rod Carew or I'm gonna put Carew back on the other team because this team has plenty of action. I'm gonna have good players not in the, in the roster. We're gonna go with Pender. Okay, and starting pitcher. I like to find a guy who at least has innings pitch, has you know enough like average innings pitch as a starter. Probably my starter right there. Mm, tough call. Maybe they're both good. White and Sarmiento, so I would use um, either one of those. I will go with Sarmiento with 3.39 ERA. ERA is the most important thing for pitchers in this game. So here's my first team. Lonnie Smith, 68 steals. He's going to be our leadoff. Wow. <laughs> Statistically, anyway. Oliver. What about power? Didn't get a whole lot of big power, but also there wasn't enough power back in that era. Yeah, this is a great lineup. Batting order is going to be Lonnie Smith with major wheels. I feel like the, these cards are upside down. 68 with 307. That's awesome. Lee Lacey, Al Oliver, Larry Hendon, Bob Diaz, Bittner, Randolph, Rhino, and Griffin. With Sarmiento on the mound. I'll we'll try and do this quickly. Throwing Rod Carew back in because I can. So that's one of the things like when you're making your teams, you have to have little rules for how you're gonna how are you gonna go about uh, oh, this this team has a manager. Um if there's duplicates, what do you do and things like that. If you're playing with a friend, you just gotta sort that stuff out to begin with. Um Got, I got good. I got everybody. We're going to give Whitey Herzog to the other team so they've got a manager with Lonnie Smith leading off. They'll be the cards. This team will be the eighth with Billy Martin. Two catchers to choose from. Wildner. First base. Once again, it's going to be a tough at first base with Pete Rose, Steve Garvey, and Rod Carew. That's crazy. And Tony Perez. Pete Rose, 271. Not a great year. So now Tony Carew. Garvey, 282. Garvey will probably end up in DH. First. Guys, Washington looks good. Goes out. Third. Nettles. I thought Nettles was pretty good. His average was pretty good. Alright, we'll go with 
That was probably in the second base. Any of these infielders. I like having guys that are like that infielder and killing you guys. Ricky Hatcher. DH, Pete Rose doesn't make the cut. Yeah, I probably should have cut this part from the video. Then we got one guy with wheels, Jose Cruz. He would definitely upset that. 21 steals, he can lead off though. Bruce probably going to hit third. Well, doesn't have a lot of power. The other team has better hitters of all, for sure. For sure. Wow. So I'm going to hit Carew third. Let's go on Washington second. No, this guy. Nice. 298 hit second. Carew third with 319. Darby with 16. Now losing 282. Can clean it up. Medals with eight homers, fifth. Uh, decent batting average for one Ron Washington. Carlton looks pretty good. Eric Shell, that guy's got good stats. Couple good relievers on this team. Yeah, a lot of good relievers on that team. But we're not going to get to the relievers. I'll, I'll discuss a little bit. So Carlton will be on the mound for the A's. Billy Martin. Care who's home or away, you can do whatever you want. Decide however you want. Probably on that support is best if you're playing with a friend. But in terms of the Cardinals, we'll bat first. So I'm going to do um, play it just the way I would play it. I'm going to use a score sheet. I just found this on the internet. I like something that has both teams on one sheet. And I also have to. Uh, bring up at this point, because I'm stealing an idea from a different game here, of, of how he writes down the, um, the batters. So let's actually let me slow down here. Here's the basis for this game. It's going by at bats, you're using the batting average and deciding based on a die roll of three dice, what happens in that bat at bat. Is it a hit, an out, or something else like a walk. Um, so, on one hand, we got Steve Carlton pitching. He is a 310. I'm write him down here. Pitcher is a Carlton. He is a lefty. He is a 310. Going to give a minus two to each hitter's roll. So the ERA is the most important thing for the pitchers, like I said. And I have this little chart which basically has four to four point four nine, four to four and a half is even, doesn't give the pitcher or hitter an advantage. If their ERA is lower than that, then the pitcher is going to have a bonus, and if it's higher than that, the hitter is going to have a bonus. I feel like once you see a few at bats, this will make a lot more sense than as I'm trying to describe it. But Lonnie Smith is our first. He's 
one out the other. This is where I'm just going to mention that Harry Kane. He's a righty, and his batting average is 307. We're going to round that up to 310 and then drop a number. So it's a 31. 31 stands for 310. So that's his base chance to hit, is basically 31%. So when I roll the dice, this is what I have, three dice, a 20-sided, that's going to de decide if it is a hit, what type of hit it is, and if it's not a hit, what happens then. And then these two are 10-sided, and it's, this is called a, if you roll it together, it's called like a D100 or a percentage dice. It comes up, it generates a number from 1 to 100, so that's perfect to simulate a batting average, right? So I'm just going to, I'm just going to roll his... Lonnie Smith, and then talk, talk about it. This is the first batter. Lonnie Smith. So, 73. 73. So, he got a 73. That's much higher than 31. So, I can tell right there that that's not going to be a hit. Um, but let me go backwards a little bit so I can explain that. So, the 31 here means that without any other factors, he would get a hit 31% of the time. So on a 31 or lower, it would be a hit. But we're taking into, into account that Carlton's on the mound, so that's a minus 2. So my target uh, for the bat roll is 29 then. And the other thing we're factoring in is Lonnie Smith as a righty going against a lefty. So that actually would give Smith the, the advantage. So a righty hitter against a lefty pitcher or vice versa, lefty versus righty, gives a plus one to the hitter. So Smith goes from 31 to 29 because of the Carlton minus two, and then back up to a 30 because he's a righty versus lefty. So Smith would have gotten a hit on a 30 or lower. He's a 73. That's not a hit. So I refer to the chart. For not a hit. It's right here. We got a six, not a hit. Five to six, strikeout. So I'm gonna write on Smith struck out. Next batter. Now normally I would fill out the whole batting order and start playing, but I wanted to kind of show as I go. Lacey is a outfielder as well. I just write outfield. You can which position, but since on the baseball cards it usually says outfield instead of right field, left field, whatever. Righty. So he's in the same situation actually. He's a righty with a 312 average, so R31, minus 2 for Carlton is 29, plus 1 for being a righty against a lefty, back up to 30. So he's a 30 or lower. We got an 11, 10, 1, 11, 11, how about that? So he got a base hit. That's 11. What type of hit? This is the chart I made up. And it's based on, um, I looked up, you know, quite a few statistics to come up with this. Approximately 1 out of 20 hits is going to be a home run. Um, 19 and 18, you can get a triple, but not every time because triples are pretty rare. So you have to check the batter's um, stats for triples. To you know, we'll get into that maybe, but it'll make sense. Uh, but the first 13, 15 spots are singles, and you know if the guy's got a lot of doubles and a lot of extra base hits, he has a better chance of getting an extra base hit. So he's 11, 11, 11 is a first base or a single, sorry. <laughs> runners would advance two bases. There's no runners on. Oh, I like to use that. I forgot to get out all my stuff. I got base runners. This is my old school Stratomatic board. So <laughs> we're going to put a base runner on first. That's going to be off camera. That's for me to see. You don't have to have that. You can draw a little diamond on a sheet of paper if you want. 
these dice or whatever you have to represent your runners, just to track who's on base. I'm doing a lot of things here. So he's got a single, the Lacey single. We got one out, one on. Third hitter is going to be Al Oliver. First baseman, he is an L33. Terrific batting average. L33. Um, what I, one thing I wanted to say here, as I was coming up with the rules for this game, uh, I spent, you know, I don't know, maybe a week on it, kind of came up with the, the, this basis of rolling three dice two to see whether it's a hit, and then one to see what happens in that at-bat, whether it, if it's a hit or if it's not a hit, you know, how to break it down, coming up with these charts. Um, you can download these rules on my website. I will post the link at the bottom. It's about six or eight pages of rules. Anyway, after I had done that, I then posted on some forums, and somebody was like, you know, there's a game like this already, like, like this meaning a game designed for you open a couple packs of baseball cards and make them on your thing. And that game was kind of similar and different. I can't remember the name of that one offhand. But that got me thinking, oh geez, that, this wasn't I wasn't the first person to come up with this idea. I started looking it up and there's a bunch of games out there like this. I found eight or ten maybe, maybe not ten. Six or eight. Anyway, a bunch and I, and I read through the rules whenever I could find them. Some of them were like in the 80s games that came out like an actual board game you could buy so I don't know what the rules are for that but one of those games in particular really stood out as a really good game I bought it because um, I was curious it's called Dead Ball by WM Akers and the good thing bad thing I guess bad thing for me in that oh man like I'm not the first person to come up with this idea is his game is also based on the same rolling two 10-sided die. And then, I think, does he do a 20? It might be end of 20, or he might have a different die to roll for the third die. But when I discovered that, I was like, well, I can't. I was initially thinking about doing this as a Kickstarter or something to fund an actual game that I can produce. And I just decided I'm not going to do that. I'm still going to finish my game and put it out there for people to enjoy. But it's too similar to a game that's already produced. Um, the plus side of that is his game is awesome. So go check out Dead Ball. It's by W.M. Akers. And the reason I am thought of it right now is because this is how he writes down his batters, too. It's the L33 for a lefty with a 330 batting average. When I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, that's so much easier to track, right, <laughs> to, to have it down there. So I I use that for, uh, I like that. I like how he handles that. All right. I got another hitter. It's going to be Larry Herndon. Oh, wait a minute. Oliver didn't hit that. I got myself all buggered up. Zero, zero, 004, that's a hit. Oops. Three, that's going to be a single. I can tell you that already. Single runner can try for two bases. Uh, I'll show you how that works. Since it's my second hitter. He's probably got a little bit of speed. Trying for an extra base. There are situations where a runner has a chance to try for an extra base. In these instances, unless otherwise noted, do a stolen base check on a D20. So that means with Lacey on first, he had 40 steals. Uh, so he actually could stretch to third, and all I have to roll is an 18 or lower. Yep, so I'm going to go for it. He got the third. Now, all over with a single. Now we got runners on first and third with only one out. My cleanup hitter's on, or I might consider a sack fly here. 
you would use a different chart if you go for a sack fly rather than rolling like that. I think it's just a P20. Oh, boy. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that just for the sake of showing you. Not what I would normally do in the first inning with my equipment later on. Sack fly, you just roll a D20 onto the chart. Six. Um, plus one to roll for every 40 RBIs. So, Herndon had 88 RBIs, so we'll add two to his roll of six. Eight. Successful sack fly, runners advance. So, we've got a run, we got a runner on the second, and the batter's out. So we got our first run in. I hear a crying baby, so I'm going to go get him up and then probably come back and finish this because I want some more. I want to go over some more rules. So, all right, part three coming up. <laughs> all right. Back after a short break. Hoping to finish an inning. <laughs> Hit. We got two outs, one run in, one on. Um, Bo Diaz is up. Catcher, I believe. He's a righty. We have two eighty eight hitters, so that's R twenty nine. And what you'll figure out once I, I wanted to do this on video so you can see that once you've got the hang of it. It's pretty quick to go through the at-bats. R29, minus 2 for Carlton, plus 1, so it's 27, 28. So, yeah, so his, him being a righty against a lefty counters, you know, so it's a minus 1 total to his. He got 32. Oh, good, this will be another fun one. And this again goes back to um, dead ball, because this is one other rule that I... I liked the way he handled walks, but I added a little bit to it. So walks can happen two different ways in this Pack Wars baseball. Um, one is when you don't get a hit, not a, not a hit chart, there are some walks on here. If you roll a two, three, or four can be a walk. One hit by pitch. Um, but the other way is actually based on the walks on the card. So he's what we decided was a 28 for this at bat. Well, if you just miss like we did, we can roll a 32 and we were looking for a 28. Check the card because we're going to look at how every for every 10 walks a batter has, that actually counts as a one point over for a walk. So for Diaz, he had 36 walks. Well, that's a bummer. Because that means he just missed a walk. This was one of those rules I was iffy on it. I decided not to round up on the on like a 36, but rather just to look at the first number for every 10 walks. And I handle home runs a similar way. And that is because I think if I we rounded there, it would end up with too many walks overall. So we just look at the first number. For every 10 walks, so he had 36 walks, so that means we would add three for that little window of a walk, just missing it. And he just missed it. So 28 and lower would have been a hit for Diaz. 29 to 31, that's three spots. 20, uh, I'm not, I'm not, Explaining that well. 28 would have been a hit, so then we add 3 for the walks. His, oh, he's going to have 36 walks. We add 3, that would be 31. So up to 31 then would be a walk. Well, he got 32. So he's out. Or he's out, and maybe he's not out. We look at not a hit. 6. Okay. Struck out. Ends the half inning. Did that make sense? If you just miss a hit, 
there's a pretty good chance to get a walk. Now we'll switch it up. They got one run. Two and a half here. Cardinals. Yeah. St. Louis got one run. Yeah, Oakland. Cards got one run on the board. Pitching for and Sarmiento is pitching for the cards. He is a righty. And his ERA is the same. Not the same. He's 339, but that puts him in the same bracket for ERA. I'll show you the ERA. He's right here. 39 minus 2. Um, anyway, if you see a guy under 3, I think it's a minus 3 or a minus 4 even. If you see a guy over 5, he's probably not even worth pitching <laughs> unless he's your only pitcher. And I did, I based those, I looked at a few things to come up with that chart. One was I looked at opponent's batting average for certain ERAs in the last year, in 2018, to get just a gauge of what the batting average should be for a, for a hitter in a particular certain ERA. Oh, that was the main thing I wanted to take into consideration. Alrighty. And the other thing that I like to do here, I use a calculator for this. He pitched 35 games, 165 innings pitch. Oops, so we're going to go 165 divided by 35 equals 4.7 was his average innings pitch. So I round, I, I bump that up. I, I round up no matter what. So if it was 4.1, I'd go up to 5. So his stamina is 5. So for this game, for Pack Wars Baseball, he can pitch up to five innings. As long as he's doing okay, he will not see his uh, numbers decrease. If he gets hammered, for so for every three runs that a pitcher gets up, they, that that minus two would then become a minus one. And then if he gives up you know, three more runs for a total of six, it becomes a zero. He basically is effective ERA goes further down the scale. If he strikes out the side, as in three strikeouts in a row with nobody getting on base, then it actually bumps up so he can gain some momentum and do better throughout the game too. Um, so your pitchers will get, I don't want to read the entire rule book here, I just wanted to do a little sample play. Uh, let's see, so let's get a few hitters from the other team, just for kicks. We got Jose Cruz leading off, he's an outfielder. It's lefty, and he's 275, so he's an L26. Lenar, so we're going to get going. I'm not going to do the whole team because we're not probably going to get that. He's an R30. Rod Carew, L32. Gardy. Not your typical cleanup guy, but hey, we're playing with random cards here. R28. There's other ways you can play too. I think it would be really fun to do a draft where you go, say you, you and your buddy each go get two packs of junk wax works great because you get 15 cards or something and they're all base cards and there's 700 cards in the set. So this sort of game would be much harder to do with cards from, you know, the last few years where you get six cards and they're all all-stars. But for junk wax, these were great. But anyway, uh, you could do a draft where you each open a pack, pick a card, and then trade. So he's getting, my buddy is getting second pick out of my pack. I'm getting second pick out of his pack. And you hand them back and forth like that. Pick a player, hand them back, pick a player. That way you can build your lineup as you're drafting too. Same thing though, go through, you know, if 
you have two junk whack packs there, you can make a team and you can sort of build the team and fill in your gaps as you're going. To, so you're more likely to get all the positions filled and things like that. Um, you can play for stakes. You can each buy two packs, but then the winner gets to keep all the cards, the winner of the game. A lot of fun stuff like that. The honest thing is, I part of the reason I wanted to actually make this game is I've got a three-year-old, and in two or three years, he's he already enjoys opening cards with me. He'll be, you know, smart enough. He's, he's a smart kid. He'll be able to understand this at least a little bit where I can play a game with him. Open up, open up some cards and play a game with him. And I'm showing you the advanced rules here. I maybe should have done a video of the beginner rules, which at the very beginner base, you don't even have to take into account the, you know, what side of the plate they bat on or who the pitcher is. And you just, you just roll Mickey Hatcher's a 249. You just roll. Look at those first two numbers, 24. If he was 24 or lower, he gets a hit. That's the simplest version of the game. For people just learning. But let's see what Cruz does. And this is where I'll kind of start to show you that you can speed things up as you get better at it. 55. Five. 55 is too high. That's not a hit. 5 is okay. Let's drop it out. Uh, another thing, if you're playing like a tournament or a season or whatever, I like this rule. 55, uh, 5, 5, you'd have to check for an injury. So you roll again. If he rolls a five again, he'd be injured. Um, that's just long term. If somebody was doing like a season or a tournament or something, but not us. Sixteen, probably a hit. And then another one went way over here. Sixteen, sixteen. So that is a hit, and that's going to be a good hit. Uh, he only had two homers, so he doesn't get any bonus on the hit type. Double. So he's on second base. Good hit, buddy. Rod Kablu. And see, this is where I can speed things up because I don't even need to look at their batting average or anything to know that a 0-4 is a hit. 4 is a hit. <laughs> 12. It's a single. Uh, runners advance two bases. So he singled. But that was enough to get the run in. So we already got a tie game. Cruz on first. Steve Garvey looking to give his team the lead. Now just for kicks, let's look at the, go back to the rules. He's a 28, par 28. He's against a righty. So he'll get minus two from Sarmiento's ERA. So that puts him at 26. And another minus one for being righty on righty, which advantage to the pitcher. So 25 or below for Garvey. He got a 30, and 10, and 30 puts him in the range of maybe a walk. No, nope, look at that. 20 walks. If he had, a, you know, a few more walks, he would have walked there. But instead, it's not a hit. 10, strikeout or line out. Did we have that one earlier? Strikeout or line out. Uh... If the result is 10, the pitch, and the pitcher has twice as many strikeouts, the pitcher, Samanto, 81, has earned runs, 62. No, he does not. And it's a strikeout. Otherwise, it's a line out into a double play. So he lined out, and the lead runner got caught. So when Nas was on, and what happened at the end? I forgot to write it down. He singled. And I scored from second on Carew's hit. Carew was on first, but he just got doubled up on a hard line drive by Garvey. Boom, and we have a 1-1 tie after we won the play. Uh, I hope that made sense to you guys. You can do this with any baseball cards. You don't need to have brand new junk wax packs. You don't need expensive Donuts 1983 packs to play this game. You can use packs from any year or any whatever, as long as it's got the stats on the back, you can grab a stack of commons. You don't need cards. It's just fun to play with cards, right? You could just write down all the player stats from the, my, my team's the Mariners, from the 2018 Mariners, and play, I could play against, you know what I'm saying? Like, as long as you have batting average, home runs, stolen bases, uh, we didn't get the stealing. 
there's, I have, you know, you can steal bases. Maybe I'll do a whole game on video one time. This was long enough. I ended up with a, over a half hour video to open a few packs. And, but I'm walking you through the rules slow. I think the game takes, if you're writing everything down, like I do, takes half hour to an hour probably. Um, if you're not writing everything down and you just want to bust through the at-bats really quick and see who wins the game, it's probably 20 minutes. Um, but there you have it. Pack Wars Baseball. I will post the link for it um, that you can download the rules off my website. You can see a lot of my artwork there, too. I've done artwork. I do a lot of trading card artwork uh, for Tops and other companies. Baseball, football, Star Wars. UFC, a lot of fun stuff. So, um, and I'm also going to post the link for Dead Ball, and I believe he charges ten dollars for the game. If you like this, I would say definitely check out Dead Ball. It's it goes a lot more in depth. He has a lot more rules on creating your own players, on, on having fictional lineups, um, on He's got things where players can change and develop over time. His wasn't geared for baseball cards, for using baseball cards, but it easily could, right? The basics of the game is very similar to what I'm trying to do here. Uh, he went at it with a, a lot more, a bigger scope, and did all that, all that stuff, you know, with um, a lot more detail. And for me, I feel like I was focused more on statistical accuracy matching where if you played a whole season the players would hit at the right batting average have the right amount of home runs have the right amount of stolen bases uh you know all of that depends on how often you try and steal with them too but anyway i don't know if you can hear that crying baby in the back <laughs> i gotta run hope you enjoyed that i'll post more videos of busting into some of these packs even if i don't post more you know gameplay from the game uh, thanks for checking it out. I'm Brad Oop. At Wars Baseball, 83 Dominus. Ryan Sandberg, first pack mojo.